just hang out and play guitar. But I got a cup of coffee. And I figure I'd sit here and just hang out and talk to you guys a little bit. Because um, sometimes when I'm jamming, I try to... Uh, what up, Duff? I try to talk. And, um, you know, sometimes I miss the comments. I'm, I'm still not a professional at talking and playing guitar at the same time. Um, so I figured today, just hang out, answer questions, talk. Nothing is too taboo. Um, you know, I love hanging out and just bullshitting and kicking it with you guys. If you ever came to any of my shows, you know, I'm very, very easy to find after the show. Normally, you know, especially at my solo gigs, I'm sitting on the stage after the show and just hanging out, selling merch and just talking to everybody. Um, something I enjoy doing because I enjoy talking about music. Um, most importantly, music, and uh, I could talk about it all day long. So now is the time to ask away and ask your boy whatever you want because I'm here to talk. And uh, anyway, so um, yeah, tomorrow I'm heading out to Montana uh, with my good friends playing with the guys in a great death metal band, new band, young kids called Aquavaria. And me and my production team are doing a video. For Aquavaria while we're there and also playing um, with Hail the Horns, you know, my good friends in Hail the Horns, the band I'm in with Opus and Tony from Static X. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a great time. It's always a really good time in Montana. Always a real, really good time. Uh, whoever wrote me in Russian, I'm sorry, I don't speak Russian, so you have to type in English, my friend. Comrade, type in English and then we can talk. So, um, yeah. So get ready for that. And then um, I've been announcing I got a whole bunch of solo gigs coming up in February. Basically, all my weekends should be booked up for February. Um, I'm playing down in South Carolina. I'm playing in Wisconsin. And uh, and then in, I believe in Mississippi, too. Yes, Mississippi. Uh, the Strat. Good question. Someone just asked me about that, Duff. Um, no, the Stratocaster is still down. I have to get it fixed. There's something up with those pickups. Um, it pisses me off because I, I just bought that damn thing and um, the pickups, I brought them in to get fixed and, and they're still not fixed. And I really do love that guitar and I got it for a really good price. Um, so I got to find somebody who can fix it for me. I, I used to have a couple different um, guitar builder friends that would help me with that stuff. But uh, I, I don't, I've lost touch with a lot of these guys over the years and I got to find someone who'll do it. So, uh, yes, I, I will get it fixed because I do love Fender Strats. Uh, now that I got my beautiful Gibson SG right next to me that I've been playing, that'd be great to perform with a Strat and an SG, you know? Um, what do you think about Lines at the Gate in my contact with Machado and the new El Nino stuff? New El Nino rips. Guys, I'm doing a lot of solos. Um, exci it's exciting for me because I always wanted to do shred solos in El Nino back in the day. And I never, um, nobody really wanted it back in those days because it was the whole new metal era. But now it's cool, again, to do solos, thank God. And they wanted me to shred out on the record. And we're getting ready to release the new single and video that I was part of. Um, well, I was part of the whole record. And I did a lot of solos on this record. So I'm excited about it, man. And the new singer is incredible. So thank you, Mike. This is uh, my buddy's band, Thy Enemy. Everybody go check them out. They're incredible. Uh, we just did a new video also for Thy Enemy. I think I'm getting text messages. You may not hear me. Can you hear me? I hate when people do this, text me when I'm online. Please do not text my phone when you see I'm on YouTube, people. Please don't do that. Um, anyway, so uh, am I in contact with Machado? What do I think of Lion? No, I'm, I, I have no contact with him. Um, I haven't talked to him since a very long time. Um, and line, that Lion's at the gate, I think I heard one song. It sounded cool. I mean, I don't know. It was all right. You know, to me, you know, I wasn't, you know, it's nothing, I don't think it's as special as the new El Nino, but uh, it sounds cool. It sounds like they're probably going to do some cool things, and good for them, man. I'm happy for them. You know, um, how do you get inj injured? What? Playing instrument? Ask that, me, ask that again. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't see that question. Um, you know, here, look, guys, here's the thing. When bands break up or split up, um, you get more music. So listen, man, Lines at the Gate, I, they're cold, right? Um, they're doing their thing. Cool. I'm sure they're going to be very productive making records. Um, and then the new El Nino, we're going to be very productive. So, you know what, for the fans, it's a win-win situation. Uh, everybody gets more 
music when a band breaks up and splits up. So there you go. But I will say, you're going to get a lot of music out of me because I'm putting out the new Revenge Beast record soon. I'm putting out a new Hail the Horns, a new solo record. We got the new El Nino record. I don't stop. You can't stop me. I just keep writing and playing. Um, you know, I think that's why um, they kept me around so long in Soulfly because I, I could go in and make a record like this. You know, they got very, very, they got a guy who loves to be in the studio and can record very quickly and I can knock records out in one week if I, if I have to. Um, just because I love it. It's a passion of mine. All right, what else? What else you guys want to know? Anything? Well, it's like when Sepultura split up, you know? Sepultura started making records. Soulfly started making records. Guess what? That's two records a year. So the fans, it's a win-win thing. Let's be adults here, you know? How did you get inspired to play guitar? Um, it's funny. Led Zeppelin got me into playing guitar when I first heard it when I was a young kid. I had an older cousin, older brother that turned me on to Led Zeppelin. That was uh, my first introduction to like heavy metal and rock and roll and stuff. So Jimmy Page was the guy. And then also, if, if you... Uh, also, um, there's that movie Back to the Future with, with Michael J. Fox. The guitar shred scene at the end of the movie. I remember seeing that movie when I was like six years old, six or seven years old back in 84, I think it was. And I was like, I want to do that. I want to be that guy. I mean, listen, man, that was the 80s. And there was nothing cooler than wanting to be a shredder, Eddie Van Halen style guitar player. That was the cool thing when I was a young kid coming up. Everybody in my neighborhood here in New Jersey played guitar or wanted to play guitar. Everybody was a metalhead. Um, you know, that was the thing. But, you know, nowadays it's it's different, you know. But whatever. It is what it is, right? Uh, this tapestry, I don't remember where I got this, man. I think I got it at some sort of like flea market or it was a carnival I went to last summer. I love tapestry. I love decorating with tapestries. I just think they look cool. And honestly, I'm like a hippie at heart. I love hippie music. Any of the wild audio guitars yet? Good question. Hunter. Hey, Hunter, what's up, man? I'll see you uh, tomorrow. Um, yes, I, I think I played one. I've seen them a lot. I played one of them. They were cool. Um, they play great. They sound great. Um... But, hey, what's up, comrade in Russia? Um, but they're a little weird looking to me. I'm not, I'm not too crazy. I, you know, I wish I wish they kind of stuck a little bit more to the Gibson style. Um, you know, not not so different. Um, they look a little, little. I don't know, not really my style that I would play look-wise. Uh, but I, they sound great. I mean, you're definitely going to get your money's worth. I mean, I love Zach Wilde. He's one of my favorite guitar players. I just kind of wish that his models were a little bit closer to... Um, to the Gibson shapes. So cool. What else guys? Yeah, my phone's blowing up here. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. I, I got to find the setting where I can get people to not text me. People are annoying off the topic, but just saw the beneath the rise concert. You played flawless and did a great job. Thank you, Johnny Farner. That, uh, that means a lot to me. That means a lot to me because, um, I worked very, very hard um, to be get prepared for that tour. That was not easy to learn all those old school Sepultura songs. A lot of them I knew, um, but I really wanted to show a lot of respect to Andreas. Um, I did not want his guitar solos or his riffing um, to be different than what it was on the record. People paid good money, you know, to see Beneath and Arise. Um, speaking for myself, I wanted to play just like the record. Um, I wanted to put on a great performance and, and pay homage to Andreas. Um, that was really what excited me was that, you know, Andreas has always been one of my favorite lead guitar players. And I really wanted to show him, um, I really wanted to show, pay homage to, to show my respect to, to what a great guitar player Andreas is. So when it was time to like learn all those solos, I learned them by ear it took me about two or three weeks to really try to learn those solos as close as I could get them because there's really not a lot of tab out there. Um, and I did it, I think, you know, and I, I was very uh, excited. Honestly, that was one of my favorite tours I ever did um, because that's my favorite era of Sepultura. Um, so thank you, Johnny. I'm glad you can hear me clearly. Um, so anyway, so so yeah, that was really, really um, 
an important tour for me because um, that's my favorite era of Sepultura was Beneath the Remains and Arise, uh, specifically because I think that's Andreas um, at his best in the early Sepultura years. Although I do think he's gotten better. That new Sepultura record I think is amazing. I think um, it's just as good as anything they put out back in the day. And I think it, it showcases how great Andreas has gotten better. He keeps getting better, you know. Have I talked to Andreas after leaving Soulfly? Uh, no, we are friends. I've, I have run into him from time to time. He's always been very cool with me every time I've, I've talked to Andreas. Um, and obviously, I've always been very excited to talk, talk to him also. Uh, we do have mutual friends in Brazil. And, you know, we've, we've been talking, you know, I know, I know I've relayed messages to our mutual friends and I hope maybe one day I could do something with Andres because again, he's one of my favorite parts of, of what was Sepultura and was a very big influence on me. Andres was just as important to me as Dimebag, um, or, or Kirk Hammett, you know, any of the, the, the thrash metal shredders. He was very important to me and, and I was very influenced by him, so... Well, thank you, Johnny Farner. Um, that's what a lot of people were saying that whole tour. So, uh, yeah, people look exhausted on stage. You know, listen, you, you got to show up prepared, man. These tickets are not free. I always say that. And we were going to some countries, you know, that people don't make a lot of money. Like in Russia, I'm assuming in certain cities and certain cities down in South America. You got to come. You got to come out and give 100%. And um, a lot of people were saying what you just said, you know, that some people looked exhausted on stage. I know I wasn't, man. I came out guns blazing, man. I was super excited to be there, and I worked very hard, dude. I put about a month of rehearsal every day um, to prepare for that tour. Um, yo, listen, man. You know, put your money on me, guys. I, I, I come, I come to uh, show up and, and give a hundred percent. You come to my gigs, you're gonna get a performance that is a hundred percent. I promise you that. Promise you. All right, what's next? Next question. I will say, you know, I, I'm, I'm, there's something I'm trying to keep away from a lot of those topics, honestly, because at Blabbermouth, I know you're out there, you're watching my videos and you're trying to like grab little sentences, change my words and kind of like put it on your page and, and make me kind of look like I'm not grateful or something. Listen, I'm very grateful for my time in the band. Very, very grateful. Um, and whenever I play those songs live, I'm, I'm paying homage to my, to my, you know, respects to my era in the band. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm really always just trying to, to do that. So, uh, you know, but there was, there was no way I could, I could have carried on no way, especially after obviously the pandemic. So anyway, what's next? What's the next question, guys? Next question. Shoot away. I got about 10 more minutes here and then I got to split and I may get, I may come back on later on tonight to jam on my beautiful Gibson SG that I'm so stoked to play. Anything else? Cool. Good talk. <laughs> I am excited, though, about this YouTube channel, guys, because it is growing. Um, I appreciate that. I'm glad you guys are all coming over to this page. Um, I'm really trying to push this channel and get it to grow because um, I have a lot more stuff to offer you guys. I, I plan on doing a lot more playthrough videos. It's going to get more professional. So just stick around for that. I believe you was at the Hail the Horn show on Sunday and you killed it. Well, thank you, Sergio. I believe I was there too. That was a, a great night of metal over at uh, Toad's Place. I think it was Saturday night though, not Sunday. And uh, like I said, this weekend, um, Hail the Horns is playing out in Montana. I think we're doing Missoula and, and Great Falls. So um, come on out. It's going to be a great show if you're in the Montana area. I love going out there, man. Montana for me is like, Man, I love it. It's like the Wild West, man. People are so cool. Um, I love the food. A lot of hunters out there, and I love to eat a lot of wild game type food. I love elk, deer. Um, so it's good eats out there. It definitely is. What else, guys? That's right, Sergio. That's cool you were at the show, man. It's always a, a pleasure to play the, the Opus Blizzard Bash, man. It's always a good time. Always a good time. So, yeah, somebody was asking about my hat. So this is my friend's band, Thy Enemy. They're incredible. Am I married? No, I'm not married, man. Nope. Um, no, not married. But I do have a girlfriend, um, which is great. It's been a long time since I had one of those, so 
because I'm home. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. All those years of touring in Soulfly and Cavalier Conspiracy, it, it, it put a huge, um, it was huge pressure on my life, um, in my personal life. Just, just impossible to have a girlfriend. Absolutely impossible. And no one cared if you had a girlfriend either. You know, nobody, nobody really wanted you to have a girlfriend. Um, so it's great to be home and finally have someone that's, that's been really, really good to me. Um, and, um, she's the one that bought me this beautiful Gibson SG and has been very supportive. Um, and we have our production team together, CSMY Productions with, uh, with my Rip and Shred Productions. And we opened up a, a photo, photo, sh uh, studio and videography studio. So any of you guys, um, that want to do a photo shoot and you're in the New York City, New Jersey area, hit me up, man. And. We'll have you come in. We can do some photos and, and do a video, a professional music video, which is what we're doing for this band, Thy Enemy. And here's the thing, guys. If you do a video with us, I promote it like crazy. As you can see, I'll wear your gear. Um, I, I promote it on all my social media. We're almost done with Thy Enemy's video, and I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel. I'm going to put it up all on my Facebook pages, Instagram. So you're going to get a lot of uh, uh, support from, from my end of things. So it's worth it. Trust me. It's worth it. And the quality is great. You know, Little C at CSNY Productions is awesome at what she does. She's very, very uh, talented, so, and beautiful. What else, guys? What else is going on? Next question. Shoot, shoot. All right, well, I got a lot to talk about, whether you're asking questions or not. Did you get to sell the guitar? Uh, no, the one you're talking about that I had at the show the other night, that's still for sale, so if you're interested... Uh, hit me up, private message me. <laughs> That's cool. Stay single. Trust me. <laughs> you know what, man? Yes, I agree with you. Stay single is a hundred percent right. But I got someone who's very, very cool, and um, so far so good, and I, she's very great. I was just listening to the new Knock Loose. Yeah, I heard some of their stuff. They're kind of cool, you know. And uh, hey, speak of the devil. Um, no, don't stay single. No, you got to get a girlfriend right away. Right away. Run out. Will you do a solo tour in Europe? Hey, you know what, uh, Mr. Gingerbeard? Um, I would love to do a tour in Europe. Um, hopefully soon, you know, when things get better. I think it's too much of a risk right now with the cancellations. I know Europe is super, super strict with things. Um, so when things open up, I would love to do it. I know El Nino has scheduled some some festivals here and there uh, next this summer. We'll see. I, I hope it all works out and they happen because um, it'll be my... Return to Europe with El Nino, and those will be some very, very big shows, you know. Yo, que paso, amigo, in Minas Gerais, Brazil. Boja, boja, legal. Minas Gerais, viva Brazil. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I want to talk about Revenge Beast. That's my new death metal project. Uh, I, got some, I got a great video up here that CSMY did. And did a couple of videos actually with, with, with CSMY. It's it's great stuff, dude. This new project I got called Revenge Beast is the heaviest stuff I've ever done in my life. It's just straight up brutal death metal, but the solos are very melodic, you know, like death, obituary, suffocation, all the death metal that I'm into, like the early 90s uh, death metal sound. And um, we've been getting great reviews, man. You know, we're, we're just coming out super heavy. Um, and I will say, you know, for all you guys that, liked what I brought to Soulfly and Cavalier Conspiracy. It's all in Revenge Beast now, guys. You're, you're going to hear that same exact style that I, I brought to the table. Uh, is a bit scattered. Revenge Beast would deserve full attention. Yes, Johnny. I, I do think I might have bitten off more than I can chew right now. And uh, no, I'm not staying single. No. <laughs> I just said I got a beautiful girlfriend. I, I'm, not, I'm not staying single. So anyway... Um, so like I said, Revenge Beast is, um, I, I you know, listen, I, I'm constantly creating music. I, I don't like to spread myself too thin, um, but Revenge Beast was definitely something um, we did. We started during the pandemic and, and we're just rolling with it, man. And, and we want to get it out there more. And when the time's right, we will get out there and do shows. We're, we're in no rush uh, to get out there and start playing live yet, but we are releasing a new record very soon on a, on a really great label that gave us offered us a deal and um you're gonna hear a lot i promise man we're, we're gonna be doing a lot and the music speaks for itself guys once you crank up revenge beast 
scroll through my my all my stuff right here and you will see you know uh the new the new record for revenge beast i'm I'm really not sure what we're gonna well you will know soon okay we will put out the name soon so who else is in the band it's a bunch of friends of mine um from baltimore um, that were just in local bands around Baltimore. I produced their band called Purgatory Earth about three years ago. And basically during a pandemic, we said, hey, man, let's, let's start a band up. So we did it. You know, these were guys that reached out to me, asked me how I was doing and were very supportive as friends. And during the pandemic, we started recording and, 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 and writing stuff. And, you know, and that's what bands are supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do during a, a situation like COVID is call each other, say what's up, you know, and bring you know give ideas back and forth about for doing a new record so basically we recorded a whole record from home um on our own and that's how revenge beast started so something good came out of uh the pandemic which was revenge beast and also hail the horns now hail the horns we're doing more covers for now but we did just start doing some originals and we will be dropping that soon yeah sepultura revenge beast that's a great idea man well hey man listen dude don't be surprised if I do something soon um, with Andreas and Sepultura and, and something in some way. Um, like I said, th there's always been a mutual respect between me and him. I'm a huge fan of his. So um, if, if they offered a tour or something, yes, of course I would do it. I would love to do it. I think those guys are, are awesome, especially their new record. Yo, what's good, Anthony W? I'm good, man. All right, guys, a couple more questions and I, I got to go. It's dinner time. I'm being cold. So, um, shoot, you hear that dog? We got this crazy dog in the neighborhood. He's a bloodhound. He smells dinner. Dinner's cooking. What else? Anything else? Questions? All right, I'm going to wrap it up then, guys. I'm starving. I got a steak waiting for me. All right, man. Well, listen, everyone have a great, great night. Oh, we got one more question from Vlad. Hope the virus shit will end soon. Thanks for your solo, Soulfly music, innovation, waiting you in Europe, not only in America. Right on, bro. Well, thank you, Vlad. I appreciate it. Um, like I said, my new solo record I'm working on, too. That's going to be shredding, I promise you. I'll probably have some guest vocalists on it, too. Um, and this new Revenge Beast, guys, go check it out right now. As soon as I, I end this, this video, scroll down on my YouTube channel and listen. Give a listen to all the Revenge Beast songs. I think we have four or five up already. Um, and um, it's some of the best stuff I've ever done, guys. The music speaks for itself. You know, if anyone asks why did Rizzo leave Soulfly, Revenge Beast. Listen to it. That sums it up. The stuff smokes anything I've done in the past, dude. Way better. So listen to it. Revenge Beast. We're taking over, man. So subscribe and follow us and uh, be fans. So, all right, man, I'm out of here, guys. Good talk. Peace. Have a great weekend. Adios. Ciao.